Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the Can Crusher Nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Got a shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. everyone this is ringside rain and you're listening to can crushers podcast and now here is your host mark the mark martinez Hello. Hello. wow the cockles are bad for me well that's because we have not been together in essentially three weeks you that's know that. exactly it yeah oh, it's been a long three weeks uh we we chit chatted here and there, but not really deep dive into anything. And by the way, I'm the host, Mark the Mark Martinez. That's Sir Michael Jenks. You're listening to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. If you didn't know from the amazing intro now that will be heard every week from Ringside Rain. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jenks did not hear that, by the way. He did not know any of that was coming about. So I can't believe that happened. So, yeah, I don't know. It. Uh, I, so I, you go ahead. I was gonna say you told me the story, but let's can you give a regaled addition to our listeners because this was something that came up fast and quick on Wednesday. Fast and furious. It, it, fast and it, furious. I, I'm not gonna say who we had scheduled because it right. still might come about. It might not come about. There's talks because he's a independent free agent right now, da, 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 so I'm not going to spill any of that who was scheduled to come on the show. So I'm sitting on Instagram after the cancellation comes in on Wednesday, knowing that it was only going to be published late at night Wednesday anyway, just because of schedules. First time we've ever posted one at like 6 o'clock at night. No harm, no foul. Uh, the listeners, thank you, by the way, stepped up and brought it. I looked at the numbers yesterday and, oh, shit, you guys, I thought, well, I might have lost the pooch on this one. Did not. Did not whatsoever. So I'm sitting there in a mass chaos. I'm like, I don't want to not have a spotlight. Who can I grab that's online, on socials right now? Ringside Rain popped up. Now, I reached out to her last year after she won the WWE announcer contest. Uh, again, I thought there was a more of a name to this, and Rain in the interview says, no, that was it was just called the announcer contest. Okay, whatever. So I reached out to her, and she's like, oh, shit, yeah, you've been in, like, my box for a year. You've been shuffled around. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I reached out to you a couple times, and... I'm like, if you're if you're willing, I'm still interested if we can set up a time. She's like, I'm available tonight. Now, granted, tonight for her, after I tell her, hey, we're on the East Coast, I'm at 5 o'clock. 2 o'clock works perfect for her. It was literally a turnaround of like, mm, I don't know, an hour and a half, essentially, that we, boom, had it set up and we were good to go. It, sometimes, I guess, you just get thrown into... The clutter, if you don't talk on Instagram enough, I still am not, you know, I have a communications degree, for the love of God. I still don't understand the algorithms of social media, because yeah. everybody's is completely different. I, I just don't understand why, if I have an ongoing, even if it's a year ago, conversation with somebody, why it gets dismissed. I don't know. Yeah. But doesn't make any sense. All, all turned out well. A uh, great interview. We, we, I'm gonna ruin it. She's gonna come on and do a recap with us sometime, Jenks. I uh, can't wait. I I can't wait, and I love that you didn't. You purposely didn't say anything to me after until you were right about the post, the show. Obviously, you've had a lot going on that night with getting the interview set up and turning around and having it in an hour and a half. But 
he sends at Mark sends me the picture and goes, guess who I got on? And I'm like, no shit, you pulled that off. And sure enough, you did. Mark, we might need to start calling you uh, Daddy Magic here on this podcast. <laughs> that's a- I think. <laughs> No, little... that's all I was gonna say. I'm just gonna call you Daddy Magic from now on. That sounds a little weird. Well, isn't that what uh, that one guy from your favorite tag team in AEW is called, Daddy Magic, Matt, or whatever his name is from uh, 2.0? Oh, oh, yeah. He does. I hate you. I hate your face. Oh, you led me right down that path, you motherfucker. And there's your uh, I had to. I had to. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a great turnaround and we connected, we, uh, like she's sending me stuff. This is cool. Um, I'm super excited to have kind of ringside rain in our back pocket to come on and chat WWE with us. She catches up on AEW every once in a while, but, um, she has a, a strong love for, uh, a couple people in WWE that is creepily weird. Make sure you listen to the podcast. You'll find out. But, Jenks, one of the first things she told me is her first match that she saw in the Philippines, she saw John Cena. And I asked her right on air. I said, how the hell did you know who it was? Because how did you see him? She got it. <laughs> so she's got. I think she's got our stupid humor. She passed the test. Yeah, she passed the test. <laughs> no, it's great. That might, be, that, that might uh, be a triple threat for this uh, recap show then. That the viewers might not be able to handle. I know. For the listeners, not the viewers, but the listeners. Yeah, because we've tried a couple triple threats, and then some people just don't make it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, hmm. seems have, like somebody on this call right now. Uh, <laughs> have it be you, or have it be somebody else, or you. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah, just me. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you. We haven't talked to you before Forbidden Door, essentially. Yeah. We, we we tied, by the way. So yeah. not that the beer was on the line, but you might have to do something to get a number one contendership match back before you even get the <sighs> chance to win a six-pack again it's because you've just been fucking floundering miserably on your picks. But that's okay. We tied, so I didn't do well I'm either. It. I'm overthinking them. That's, that's the problem here. But anyways, go on. Yeah. Uh, So it's been a little bit since we talked. Uh, Last week, no show, and I'll get to that a little bit. How have you been? What's going on in your life? And we will get to wrestling, but guys, sometimes you just need to talk to your friends and and find out what's going on, because that's actually half the battle in life. That is very true, Mark. Uh, For me, it's been chaos. Not really, but... uh... You know, professionally wise, there's things come down the pipe. Didn't get things I kind of applied for, so it's kind of go back to square one with that. Um, but you know, personally, everything's going good with that. Uh, me and the lady friend have been hanging out a lot over the weekends. Just spent a family day with her family uh, yesterday, and last the weekend before that, we were doing stuff up here with mine. My niece's birthday happened, so. She's now fully engulfed in the double digit years. So we're celebrating her. Oh yeah. She's a she's a chicken legs double uh, eleven right now. She's a double one. So what is worse than that is she's a preteen now. She's been a preteen since the day after she turned ten. Okay. It was like a light switch went off. <laughs> the attitudes there, everything is there. So <laughs> she's she's already been off and running for the past God year already year in a week uh but yeah so she turned ripe old age of 11 she's off and running um but yeah it was a good birthday celebration with the family it was great seeing everybody again uh cousins wives and that nothing too crazy we just got together hung out in the afternoon and then everybody went and did their own things so that was pretty nice but saw the girlfriend a lot over the past two weeks which is great we usually only get once a week but we've been really mixing in a lot of uh, midweek uh, excursions together and just meeting up and just doing things. So that's fun. Um, yeah. And I went and saw Thor Love and Thunder, the new Marvel movie for all the comic book nerds and MCU nerds out there. So uh, that's been pretty much the crux of my week. 
escaping stuff at work with just personal life and getting stuff done. So, yeah. Good. Good. No, that yeah. that sounds. You know, as busy as it is, it sounds like it's still relaxing. Like when you're in the moment of the things you're forgetting about, like you just said, work or other things that stress yeah. you out. So yeah. that is that is huge. I'm so happy for you. I really am. Like you have you have a path, you have a goal, and you are kicking doors down and saying, Get the F out of my way. I you know, <laughs> you know so every time I hear that, I usually go to get off my plane from Air Force One. If you all have seen that with Harrison Ford, because that's been my cousins. If we ever emanate like kicking someone, you know, most normal people would go to 300 where they say, this is Sparta, right? Uh, my family goes to Air Force One, get off my plane. And then we just throw the guy off the plane. So that's how weird our, my family is. But yeah, I did want to, I have to do it though, Mark. I have to plug the... 40 year dash because we played the game of games this week or this past episode yeah. and it, we may have recruited you for the next iteration of that which I, is now hard at work by the creator of it i want to play moochie mania so bad <laughs> i really do guys if you have not heard about this game this is the biggest plug i might not even play collar and elbow this time <laughs> Go over and listen to the Forty Year Dash. It the the episode is called Moochie Mania. So Moochie Mania is in it. Yeah. Make yep. sure you listen. This game is it makes you think. It makes you question your life. It makes you question your friends. And I don't want to give it away, but it is it is a thought provoking game that encompasses everything that you could only imagine. Exactly, and I will say the ending may make you mad, but it's brilliant all at the same time. And I don't say that at all to this master mind of genius, Mister Mucci, Mucci Mania. So, nor should you. Uh, this, this is yeah, never, never get the chance. This is his first stroke of genius here. This is so, his Nobel Prize. This is his Nobel Prize. Um, God, it was. I can't believe how much hard work you put into it. I, I haven't seen it. So we used to do virtual trivia during the pandemic because we're nerds. And we usually go out to trivia every Tuesday. We would create virtual trivia for our just the group and just be like, oh, hey, okay, so here's some questions. What do you guys think, right? I've never seen him put more – he put more thought process into the game of games than he ever did into his rounds of trivia. And yeah, I, I, he's done that at least 10 times. But – the, he, I literally think he used the same questions over and over again before. But no, he put in a lot of thought, time, and effort, and it astounded me that he had it in him. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so I had to plug that. But you, yeah, you, you definitely we'll plug it again. We'll plug it again. We're it, plug it, it, it yeah. in. We'll create a we'll create an ad around it or something for the can crush your nation or something. Maybe but, maybe I'll even put uh, for you a dash in the. In the thumbnail for this week, so you get enough. Uh, there you go. If we can get a terrible picture of him, I can get you one. I'll see what I have. If you want to put him into that, oh, for sure. Uh, uh, thumbnail. Yeah. So we'll see what I can dig out of my phone here. Okay. But, yeah. And then I'll I'll embed it on the forty year old dash and yeah. Yes. So fuck. I have so some work. We'll, I got some work to do after this for editing <laughs> and photoshopping. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Just in case you weren't busy today or anything. So. I actually am not. Oh. My, my, my goal <laughs> today is to go hunting. On um, the game oh, okay. game system here? Yeah, Call of the Wild. Yes. I was going to say, Call of the Wild is back. <laughs> it's back. But it's back and better than ever. Well, they, um, they released a new, a new stage, and it's over, I want to say, England or Scotland or something like that. The downfall is, is it's all birds, and I cannot hit a bird worth a shit. But I think I have a plan. I'm going to get into a tree and start hitting birds. Okay. I don't know. But if you get into the tree, wouldn't that scare them away? Well, not if you sit for a while and not uh, b- cause a ruckus. Yeah, fair. Fair point. Yeah. I don't know. It, I've never went real hunting. I don't know. You probably don't really in life hunt birds from a tree. So I'm I'm already going about this the wrong way. You don't. I've gone quail hunting once. Never did it again because it was the worst. Um, 
but you don't get in the tree. And I can't, I can't sit still, save my life. It's a, it's surprising I even got two deer when I was younger. Um, so I can't sit still to save my life. So trying to hunt a bird without scaring it, that is not, no moss. That never happens for me. So good luck with that. Hopefully the tree method works. It won't. If anything, throw a grenade and hope for the best. But there's no grenades on this. I wish there was. I, I still they, use the, the biggest gun. Grenade. I still use the biggest <laughs> gun possible to kill everything. Like, I don't need golds and platinums and this and that. Now, I'm playing the game Mark's way, not the way it's supposed to be played. All I want is one of every species. I have yeah. not a bird on this fucking game whatsoever. Nothing. Sometimes, you know, Mark, to win it, to win it all, you just have to play with the biggest stick. That's so a- do what you got to do. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but anyways, how are things with you? It's been two, three weeks. It has been. It <laughs> has been. Yeah. Um, Quick updates about cool stuff, and then uh, it's a little bit of a sad note. Um, I finally, after months of forgetting I got this, and it was gone, and it was reappeared, my Liv Morgan autograph finally came in. Finally. And it was was ordered, paid for, selected, this, that, and the other thing from a private signing she did months before she won the championship. And I I wanted one when she was in her Ruby, uh, in her Riot Squad stuff, because I've liked her since then. This new iteration of her winning the championship is great as well, but I just like some of the older stuff. You know how I am. So the yep. pink hair, the, the spandex, the Riot Squad shirt, I ordered that one. I thought, well, I'm not getting it. That's some money down the drain. And it's not a lot of money. But it was money down the drain. Shit. All of a sudden this week, I have two packages. One I knew it was coming, which was actually pretty cool too. I'll release that one. And I'm like, what the hell is this one? Well, I opened that one first. Well, I I didn't know which one either one was, but I'm just going to open one package first. And I'm like, oh my God, it's my Ruby, it's my Liv Morgan one. Yes. So I'm pretty pumped about that. That was a win this week. And the other one that I got, it is a black and white picture, and in the picture, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Gorilla Monsoon, and Earl oh. Hebner. And it's signed oh. by Earl, and it says Montreal Screwjob underneath it. So now my goal is I need Bret and Shawn to sign this. I already have a Bret. I don't have anything Shawn by, uh, signed by Shawn, but this is this photo now needs to be signed by both of them. I mean, I can't get Gorilla, but it right. would have been. But yeah, black and white, and it was when they met up in the very first, you know, spot in the match, head to head introductions and everything. Yeah, so that one I'm pretty pumped about. Along with two weeks ago, Mark got two new tattoos. Uh, I got the start of Alexa Bliss on the inside of my bicep and completed is the IWC logo it is also done right next to my elbow um, and I love Lauren after a year or so of getting tattoos she's like you should probably use this because you are a pussy she gave me the uh, the numbing agent for the inside of you know my arm for Alexa Bliss yeah that was amazing. I didn't even know she was tattooing there. I'm like, Lauren, why have you not told me this before? She's like, sometimes you have to just uh, earn your I, – I pay your dues or you – know, I said pay your dues is a wrestling term, but earn right. your tattoos or whatever. She's like, but I knew you were going to cry like a bitch on this one. So, <laughs> Well, she probably wanted to see if maybe it would get better. Over time, it didn't. If you were having issues, it didn't. And she's like, "Okay, I need you to sit still for this." So, <laughs> yeah, the inside of the arm has definitely been the worst for me. Yeah, um, I still have to have Sasha around her, around her glasses that needs whitened. Um, all of this is like on the inside, so she's like started all this inside stuff, and then the next time I go down, she's gonna numb my arm again and finish all the inside stuff. So. Super excited that I'll have essentially like four tattoos complete. I'm almost running out of room on my arm. So, I don't know. Maybe it's time to shift my leg. Oh my god, you're running out of real estate here. 
Well, the leg is going to probably be like MLB, MILB mascots uh, in the that form in the form of Banksy. You know, who Banksy is the artist that goes around. And, like, oh yeah, graffiti stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How hot is that going to be? I'm intrigued. The trash panda as a Banksy crack wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not I going hope. with Crack Wolf, but there will be a no, 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 no. Yeah, I think you have to get regular Sea Wolf and Crack Wolf. <sighs> we'll talk about that off air because <laughs> <laughs> that's essentially a no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but, uh, fair enough. But oh my so, god, those are gonna be great. Those are my wins. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not super excited. Uh, last week we didn't have a show. And I did not go to Indianapolis to God of Death, which really bummed me out because we had some family issues and couldn't make it to Indianapolis. These family issues are going to truck on for a while. But let me tell you, folks, sometimes to move ahead without telling you the details, sometimes to move ahead in life, you have to cut some weight. And that's essentially what's going to happen, and Mark's going to rebound and be fan fucking tastic. So, uh, a little bummed out at the beginning, really distraught that I didn't get to see God of Death. But Gary and I have chatted. We're welcome again next year. We can go to Indiana anytime we want to see, you know, Asylum Wrestling Revolution. The doors are open, Jenks, whenever we want to get in the car and make that trip. Um, but I, 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 I'm more disappointed I didn't get to make a weapon, essentially. That's what I'm disappointed in. Not, not even the family stuff. Disappointed I didn't get to make a weapon. So I'll, I'll say, you know, you're right. Sometimes it's for the best. And honestly, we've talked offline, so we won't get into it here, but I, I'm always here for you and you know that. So I'll leave it at that. But then the other thing is, do we get to know what the idea for the weapon was or no? I don't know what he was going to give me. I don't like, I really see, I, see, I don't know what he was. If he was going to give me a crayon and a piece of tape, I would have had to figure out something from that. Gary knows I'm a slight idiot. So he probably wasn't going to give me like a gun and a grenade or anything. That... Well, what are they? <laughs> well, not I, I, so in my mind, let's say this. If you had. Because I know we've talked about you did not know what you were getting, but you've had to have pictured some things that you would want to do. I wanted you, a two by four or, or a, bat, okay. a two by four or a bat. So a piece of wood at first okay. and then kind of either bend gusset plates around it. Now I would have had to had leather gloves because I would have gone to the emergency room before the event probably started, <laughs> but bend like gusset plates around it and then wrap barbed wire in it and maybe if I'm getting a little crazy slide if you wrap barbed wire in a, in a bat you can then essentially slide maybe one or two um, light bulbs in it as well so something like that mm-hmm. then you take okay. the initial barbed wire and then the light bulbs will blast on you and then when the barbed wire goes all to hell the gusset plates are fixed to this piece of wood or bat so it's not a one use weapon it was going yeah. to be multi-use type of deal thing. Okay. What did you I picture me making? About it. Well, I did think barbed wire would be involved, maybe a light bulb, and prob- probably a piece of wood. I didn't even think about gusset plates being an option. I mean, honestly, you went, took it. My mind, and this is nothing against you, it's just my mind only went to a one-level, one-use type <laughs> weapon. But you took this to, I'm going to find a way to kill you without, <laughs> <laughs> even if the first iteration breaks. <laughs> the weapon, it becomes a boss in the fight, essentially, in that it's going to take three different layers to beat it. But it's probably more than likely just going to beat you instead. Right. So, I wanted my weapon to be the god of death, is what I essentially wanted it to be. <laughs> Not the winner of the match or the winner of the tournament. I wanted my weapon to make the iteration into, like, every other match or so. I would have fixed it in between matches, too, if you asked me. Uh, There you go. 
So he, I think he just nicknamed it Kratos to be after the God of War um, franchise. Just like there's uh, Barbie. We've had Barbie before. We've had, well, I can't think of any other ones, but now I'm thinking of Mo- Moppy, even though Moppy was just a damn mop. But <laughs> it could be an iteration. Just call it Kratos or something, Gussie or something. Gussie would be perfect. Gussie that, is perfect. Gussie would have worked. But, yeah. You're sadistic, man. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So next next year, hopefully um, that's what I can put together, or maybe he'll just put on a death match just for me and you to go out, and oh, so I can, and not between us, for the love of God, no, God, I, no, no, I'm not, no, not I'm not into any of that. I I nope. love blood, and I love seeing it on others. You made me believe my own blood. <laughs> that would legit be a spot in our match if we ever had a death match. You made me bleed my own blood. You kill. Right? <laughs> You're driving. Is I'm holding I'm driving. Hand. Yeah. Yes. All right, Jax. Let... <laughs> so that's where my life is. So, um, uh, go ahead. No, I just thought it would be, we should be, we would have to be in a tag team death match. And then when you start bleeding, you'd have to say that line and have to drive you off in a moped. And that's how the match ends. Yes. That can happen. Finish. That can Let's happen. Get, right. get another podcast that doesn't like us, and maybe we have a podcast battle. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to call out Ringside Podcast right now. The official from OVW and Impact, Daniel Spencer, and one of his co- co- co-hosts. Yeah. They're close to Indiana as well, so this all can happen. We're still traveling more than any of them. They're right across the That's border. Cool. We're right there, so... We're giving them home field advantage. That's fair. Yeah. We'll set it up. There you go, Gary. That's uh, that's your setup match, specialty match for next year. But let's talk about wrestling now that we've uh, fantasy, major fantasy booked any of that. Jenks, a lot has gone on from 3 million to 12 million things. I just, I don't know. Let's talk about Vince first. Uh, yeah, let's. So, uh, yeah. What is it? What's the number up to? I know he paid, what, up to $12 million. Was it four different instances, Mark? I don't have enough pulled up right now in front of me. A minimum of four, I thought. Minimum of four, yeah. And one was actually, I think the highest one was $7 million, And then the rest That's were, right. yeah. His paralegal was never a paralegal, but she went to law school. Um, throw in John Laurinaitis. It's his own lawsuit, essentially, but he was doing stuff with the paralegal, got fired, got brought back. Paralegal's not there. It's funny uh, about what's going on with this paralegal. So I think she's going to be somebody at the forefront real quick to release a lot of stuff. Um, some have been talent from 2008 to 2012, and then maybe 15, 16, somebody was there as well. Uh, it's messy. It, it, it really, and I know we're not really like deep diving into everything because you can go out and read it. Um, the Wall Street Journal released some, and then I think Newsweek has a hell of an article about it as well. Uh, check those out, but Jenks, the writing is on the wall, but when you read this one article, the shares that are public are shares that are public. The B shares are essentially still all owned by the McMahon family. So it, yeah. to me, yeah, Vince might take a hit in his pocket, but after reading that he still has all these back shares that people can't buy and whatever. He's going to get through this. Get ready. Here's heat. Like he got through the steroid case era by pointing at people and saying this, that, and the other. Take a hit again for five years or so, like he did early 90s when the gobbledygooker and red rooster and shit like that was there 
and then rebound and then bring it back because I see it already and we'll get to it when we get to it about the whole PG-14 era coming back. He's already mm-hmm. making steps into that knowing I might take a hit in money. This fucking business is still going to be mine when it's all said and done. Yeah. And, you know, going off of that, Mark, I was reading, actually, I was, I saw a TikTok about this. Somebody deep dive, because if you guys don't know this, Vince McMahon's contract is technically public. You can look at his contract with WWE. And there's a section in, and I can't remember what it is, and I wish I could remember the person's name that did the deep dive on it. But they basically called out, if we're sitting here and waiting for somebody to fire Vince or Vince to step down, it's not going to happen. So I have to down, I have to downplay that a little bit here because I heard this part of it, and they showed the verbiage. If Vince gets fired, he's going to have them so wrapped up in financial compensation that it would be very detrimental to the company. Um, there's a lot of back pay that would need to come out. There, the way the contract's written is Vince is, would get a heavy um, dollar amount, not just with those shares you were talking about, Mark, but just from the contract side of things and what he's getting paid out right in the day. However, if the company wanted him to quit or was looking for him to quit, which in the first place, that would never happen. We know no. Vince McMahon. He's not going to leave that company. He would essentially get nothing. He would get paid absolutely nothing except for his last paycheck. So unless they come to some sort of terms on a financial agreement, Vince McMahon is never is never going to get out of there, is never going to be ousted or fired from that role. It would take a substantial amount of money to just remove him outright from his contract. And that's not even taking into account those shares you just brought up, Mark. So really right now in my from what i've seen so far it's been pretty much for it's a rock and a hard place nobody's going to move and to your point vince mcmahon is going to come out of this not really damaged besides his reputation which honestly let's be honest it's it's been blown before and to be honest personally i despise Vince and his reputation and everything he stands for. But you talk about when the first allegation started to roll and he first walked out onto the stage on SmackDown the Friday after the first one rolled and there was cheers and they were supporting him and people were bowing down to him like he was a god on earth. Wrestling fans don't care. Majority of wrestling fans don't care. And I'll take the heat for this if you want, but a majority of wrestling fans still see him as this great human being or this great provider and promoter in that where there's people, I'll throw you into this market, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you and me and a lot of, there's some people that are actually out there just like, this guy's a piece of crap, yeah. piece of shit. And he's the worst kind. And we recognize that, but unfortunately now he has been able to be in a position of power, obviously, since it's been his company and it went public and all that. He's placed himself in the right position of even if he does wrong, which he has certainly done in this case, he doesn't get, he's not getting penalized outside of a reputation he obviously does not give a care about and doesn't care what you think of him. He's still getting the money. And he's still getting paid. And he's still running SmackDown and Raw the way he sees fit. So stay with money there, Jenks, because I, I like how you transitioned a little bit, not knowing. Um, essentially, Vince could buy, and I'm sure he's got the money. Uh, I, I don't know what his real worth is, nor do I care or anything. He could buy all the public stocks back. Yeah. And then you know what that means as well? These allegations are washed away. Because now yep. it's not a public. I Do you think that's in the back of his mind thinking, well, I could lose and I'm ballparking or nothing or whatever. I could lose $100 million. Okay? These are fake numbers, folks. I could lose $100 million um, the rest of this year if I buy 
the public shares back. Okay, he could lose that. Well, clearly he's got years left on his life for his family, this, that, and the other thing. I, WWE makes money year after year. Uh, it might not be tickets anymore. It's merchandise, it's sponsorships, it's this, it's that. It's, you know, you could look up whatever it is. He makes that $100 million back by next year again. And it's yeah. it, it's a wash. I, I used to own WWE, but uh, we got bought out by Vince McMahon to get him back. And then he goes back to a private company, and all is said and done. These allegations are then just that, allegations. There doesn't need to be a deep dive into him. There doesn't need to be anything because he just said, yeah, fuck it, I'm taking my company back. The public has screwed me over. That's his thoughts, you know? Yeah, no, I completely agree. And Mark, let's even go off that. If they start, he could easily just let them fire him, get whatever compensation he can out of it, which obviously we don't, I don't think they're going to actually fire him. But let's play that hypothetical. They fire him. He gets whatever compensation, and let's say it's three hundred million dollars. He takes a hundred million of that. To to your point, he can reinvest and buy back the company. Right now, he's going to make hand over fist dollars because he's bought it back. It's private, and to your point, they're going to make money despite themselves. Even if they try to shoot themselves in the foot all the time, WWE is going to make money. So he, he this what I hate about. Like, if you're rich, you find a way out of things. Because no matter what happens, there is no consequence here for Vince McMahon that he cares about. Right. There's consequences. There's financial implications. If that happened to me, which I don't do that lifestyle and I don't do anything like that, but if you lose $100 million, you're going to get... <laughs> I don't even know how I would even get that far. But to him... It's chump change. And that's kind of what I hate about this whole scenario is there is nothing that really falls back on him and actually presents itself as a consequence here. And that's why you see him going out cockily on TV. Not even a word, but I'm going to use like cockily. (laughs) Going out and just announcing the most random shit. Oh, John Cena's coming back next week. Well, no shit. We've been hearing about it for a month and a half. SummerSlam in two weeks. SummerSlam in, in two weeks. Thank you. He's doing it to mock people because there's no repercussions that he cares about that are actually going to impact him. Yep. That's the frustrating part of this whole scenario for me. And I realize my voice got a little elevated there, but that's what frustrates me here is that in all reality, and this is being me being pessimistic, and I'm going to promote power positivity, hopefully, for the rest of the show. But we'll get there. <laughs> just, we'll get there. Take a shot. You haven't had one in a week, a couple weeks. Uh, but there's just no repercussions. And there's nothing that's going to actually make him think about his actions. And to be honest, he's 76 years old. He wasn't going to do it anyways. One more thing with Vince, then we'll move along. Uh, other people just in crossing or in passing or whatever know I'm a huge wrestling fan. And they bring up Vince, and they say, what about, like, the adultery case or this or that, that kind of ramifications? I say this, and again, I don't know all, nor do I want to. It's personal. Um, I'm thinking Linda would have divorced him long ago if adultery or cheating or anything like that is part of her caring as well. Because... There's been allegations, as long as Vince has been Vince, I think, that are out there. So if you get wind that, all right, I'm not even using hypotheticals, but you just, you know, you get wind that somebody cheats on somebody, I, normal human beings say, all right, we're either going to go to therapy or this is done. Yeah. It's, it's not like, oh, we're going to stay together and I'm just going to forget this happened. I, I don't think she cares. I I really it, it, to see your husband yeah, mocking women, TNA matches, and not total nonstop action, total nonstop yeah. action, bra and panty matches, this that and the other thing. I don't know. I I think a wife would be like, oh man, that that kind of that disgusts me. That's deplorable seeing that my wife's my husband's face is in 
Trish Stratus's breasts every week for the last month. Yeah, it's a character, but people still have feelings. Mark Martinez is saying, I don't know if Linda McMahon has feelings <laughs> and cares that her husband is doing this. She she has her own kind of way of life and, and moving about. And she got a fucking paycheck that's bigger than a lot of people are ever going to know numbers. Money talks. Yeah. And, well, let's... Let's go off of that real quick. I mean, you're absolutely correct. And we don't know the situation with their private life. They could just be separated. They we don't know swingers. that. They could be swingers. They could be anything. And whenever. Yeah. You just don't know what people are doing with their personal lives and how they act. So it, whatever their case may be. And that's probably why she just doesn't care anymore because their, their lifestyle dictates that she doesn't really need to. Yeah, and money may talk. So Bailey either agrees with me or not. She's gonna go investigate and find out and let us know. Good. But we have, yeah. we have a private dick on we on the McMahon's. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. But yeah. So to your point, it something about their relationship is dictating that they just won't know. We just won't know, and that she just doesn't care about it. And, and to wrap this up, we don't need to know. That is their private relationship. I stirred the pot for this whole little exactly. segment, but yeah. that that's not our, you know, I don't care if my neighbors are doing whatever. I don't want them to know what I'm doing over here sometimes. Not that I'm creating meth in my studio or anything, and I'm not, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it, it, it's just sometimes things are all right to be left behind closed doors. It sucks right. that you can't in a publicly traded company, though. Yeah, exactly. Well, and to be fair, before reality television, it was nobody's damn business what happened with people. Exactly. I would say after reality TV, it, everybody thinks they're entitled to that knowledge, and they're really not. So, yeah, But people aren't entitled to know shit. You're entitled to live your life. Live your damn life. Uh, it costs nothing to just live your life. Costs, and, be your own. and it also costs nothing to smile. Exactly. Empower positivity. It only costs sunshine and rainbows. Speaking of sun, there's no transition with sunshine and rainbows. There's no, there isn't. Uh, let's talk about Sasha Banks and Paige now open to do some signings. And people are like, oh my God. Reportedly, Sasha's asking, I think it's thirty to forty thousand dollars to appear to do a signing. Already booked for one, folks, so somebody will pay it. They will get their money back over it. And Paige as well. I don't know if Paige's is that much, but it's still upper echelon higher, you know, type of deal thing. Jenks, let me ask you this. Are you alright? Uh, neither one of us are running a con anytime soon. But right. if you can run a con and you can have all these people come, are you willing to pay Sasha Banks, let's go low end, $30,000 to come to your con? Some people might not like this, but I kind of am okay with it. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm taking out a loan. If I'm running Together. a con and I know that I can get Sasha – or Mercedes, yeah. as she's now going by. Uh, right. I know I can get Mercedes to come to this con. Okay, one, you're not only getting wrestling fans to this. You're now getting the... Which Mandalorian one? Star Wars crowd. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of money there. There's a lot of money there. <laughs> a ton of money. Yeah. I mean, if it was just Sasha coming to this, I think it would be rough to recoup that much money depending on what you're getting back from her, this, that, and the other, how much ticket sales are. But if she is somebody along with Rowan, Deanna Peraza, Kelly Kelly, and I'm naming people that are on the wall in here, but you know what I'm saying, you know, people that go out and sign, and you're charging 150 bucks for these tickets, and you're going to sell 10,000 of these tickets, yeah, why don't you do it? I know there's other costs and everything, but it's it's business. 
You have to spend money to make money. No, I completely agree. And honestly, I would invest if you if you have an idealistic, if you have a giant wrestling con, say it's massive, you have the biggest one in the company. Or in the country, not the company. That was stupid. Both. Um <laughs> both. Yeah, why not? But to me, I would dedicate a corner a quadrant of my area or maybe a booth or two or something to just Star Wars memorabilia because to your point, Mark, you're selling tickets for Mercedes who was in Star Wars, was in Mandalorian. You can make hand over fist or at least get vendors in here, in there that would be Star Trek centric. And even if it's for the time she's there, even if it's like, we'll say it's a three hour signing, you get that influx of those fans as well. Plus your normal wrestling clouds, you know the lines are going to be wrapped around the building, just trying to get in to see her and see the appearance and all that. There's people that are going to pay the money, and you might as well cater to that other crowd that's going to be in there because obviously there's crossover. Some, there's crossover, but there's not full crossover. So there's some people that are just full on Star Wars nerds, and they love everything Star Wars and everything about it. Make some money off of it, you know. Just open it up enough to give them a specialized section. Do what you can for the sci-fi fans a little bit. And to your point, you're going to make hand over fist in dollars. Even if you invested, let's say fifty thousand overall, I don't know what these figures are, but thirty thousand goes to Mercedes coming in, and then you have twenty thousand for the booths and everything else to get them set up and vendor fees and whatnot. You're still making money from the vendors coming in and paying it off. You're still going to get money from the people coming in. You're going to make boatloads of money just off of those areas alone to get profit off of. Not to mention what's going on at WrestleCon. So there's so much opportunity there. I think thirty thousand is kind of cheap for her, I, even though it's it's legendary status. Thing. But I thought yeah. the same thing when I'm like, "Wow, she is." <sighs> Legend is definite, right? I, I think, and I, a lot of people hate her backstage stuff or her attitude or whatever, but sometimes you have to be like that. Sometimes you have to, you know, push people out of the way to get where you want to be and this, that, and the other. Sasha has done that. She is a role model for young girls that don't know the backstage politicals and this, that, or the other. Mom and dads are going to pay for their little girls to go anywhere. They are. It, it if she can get that kind of money, good for her. I deserved it, earned it, whatever you want to say. You know, listen, I would capitalize. Somebody pays us thirty thousand dollars to go and sit, Jenks. I'm gonna probably turn it down. I'm gonna say no. We're not. No, no, not gonna happen. Yeah, lies. Me, yeah, right. All lies. But let me let me put this in perspective too. How long was Sasha with the company? Eight years, nine years? I I bet ten. Ten years? Yeah. Okay. So we'll say Sasha was with company for ten. Twenty before like I'd say twenty fourteen. She really came into her own. We're talking about the fatal four way matches. We're talking about everything with Bailey Sasha. Twenty fifteen, she transitioned to the main roster. Three of the four horse women come up. So already that's the crux of the Divas Revolution as we knew it. You can include Paige before that, AJ Lee before that, but really that was the big shining moment that they always advertise and go with. So at that point in time, Charlotte, Sasha, Becky were already legends in the business. Whether you count it or not, for what they did at that to, up until that point, they were going to be legends in the business just because of that moment. In my thought process, I'm thinking about this, let's put in perspective some of the legendary figures you have out there, and I'm not saying they're equal, and the size of revenue growth or what they brought into the business, but just time frames. Austin was with the company eight years in his initial run, left for a half a year, came back, wrestled his final match, and was gone for 19 years. Rock came into 96, left full time 2001, early 2001, did sporadic offs, and was wrestling until about 2004, 2005, and we didn't see him again. So that was five years in total full time. In terms of perspective, you know, outside of The Undertaker and Triple H and Shawn Michaels, some of the biggest revenue drivers in the history of the company were there of limited time. 
that made the biggest impact. Again, I'm not comparing Sasha, Charlotte, Becky, or any of them to that moment, but that Divas revolutionary moment was a huge step forward for WWE, and it became legendary at that point. Sasha has had, in terms of tenure, a longer tenure than some of the biggest names in the business up until that point. Agreed. To me, 30000 is just is a lot less than he should be making. Yeah. But I... some people don't see it that way. Yeah. Hey, it's her capitalized on what she can right now. Uh, exactly. I think Paige, I, I did see a virtual signing with Paige or whatever, is, you know, for an autograph, it's going for 80 bucks and a photograph and a, and a photo is 80 bucks, but combined you get them both for, I think, 140 or something like that. So, you know, okay. she's, she's asking some healthy money as well. Like I said, I don't, I don't know hers verbatim, but they both came up in this story that I read that, you know, these two are asking for way too much money. I no, not at all. No. If you can get it, get it. it, get it. It's just like. Uh, I'll bring up Juan Soto right now for the Nationals. He he Great. turned down 14, million, 14 years, $450 million. He's 23 years old, not even in his prime of his career. He wants to test the waters. He Cool. You know that, and I know we bitch about baseball money and everything. You round that off, it's only $29 million a year. And I know you're like, oh, my God, it's only $29 million a year, Mark. You're sounding like a lunatic so right now. So broken. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Juan Soto is is a face of MLB. If he can push this contract to ten years, fifty mil, uh, five hundred million, so he is a fifty million dollar player. Why don't you? The the offers yeah. are going to be there. Uh, as much yeah. as I continue to say, God, this sucks. This uh, it, it affects us on ticket sales and everything. Sports careers slash wrestling careers are short. You have to capitalize while you're hot, young, and available. Or be smart yeah. like Bobby Bonilla, who's still going to be paid until 2035. I think Bobby Bonilla is probably an icon uh, and definitely a man I wish I could have looked after to get $1 million a year to do nothing. Yeah. Uh, yep. but you're, you're, ex- you're exactly right. You take advantage of opportunities, and if you know there's a better opportunity out there for you, money-wise, you're going to take it. Now, in the terms of Sasha and Naomi, they stepped away, not because of money, but because of a principle of the tag team title, the women's tag team titles. But they're not coming back anytime soon, and it seems like WWE is done with them. They're erasing them. Capitalize. Make that bang. She's the boss for a reason, and her name was Banks in WWE for a reason. It's the boss money. And yeah. Paige is the same way. She's the icon, one of the icons of the Divas Revolution. Make your money. Do your best. Get get your name back out there. Get yourself in front of crowds, you know, and get back to the fans a little bit. They're going to pay you hand over fist for your autograph and something that doesn't seem too – that's just an autograph, but it gives back to the fans because they treasure that. And they're going to treasure that for a long time. Sasha has di- has said, though, that she's not taking any wrestling bookings until the beginning of next year. Um, that changes day by day, folks. So whatever. Um, full-fledged page is linked to AEW. Uh, when? I don't know. Sooner than later, I would imagine. But yeah, we'll see. Might be all in at that point. She might be all into coming back. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Or she'll mm-hmm. just uh, hold out. I don't know. Yeah. All right. You guys want to hear what we have to say about this week's wrestling, and I guess we'll get to it. Uh, those are two kind of pressing topics that I, we'll continue to touch on as more and more come out. Well, I guess the Sasha one is essentially not not dead, but we yeah. took care of it. But the Vince stuff will kind of continue to touch on as more and more comes out. Um, are we going to hear names? Do you guys want to hear names? One is linked to the very first ever uh, women's referee in the WWF slash WWE. Um, first name Rita. I can't remember her last name at right. this moment. 
But yeah, uh, we'll continue to touch on it. I do think in time we're going to be shocked by some of the names that come out, and I think it's it's going to be interesting because I'm nosy, but it's also going to be very sad because if you hold Vince on that Thor or Aquaman or all these types of superhero types of platform, you should check yourself before you wreck yourself. That just slid into my head and I didn't mean to say it, but it, yeah. It's It's going to get dirty. Yeah. It's it's getting dirty. I will say this though, Mark, for me personally, I'm not going out and looking for the names. If they eventually come out naturally with this whole thing, that will happen. But for me, the names aren't as important as the activities that happen around them. And I'm not say I'm not putting down the ladies involved in this because obviously they're a huge part. And obviously they've been wrong severely in this. But to me, if the names stay out of it and it's private, it's a private matter for them. They don't want to be out ostracized of that. I think that's better for everyone. But I know there's people that are gonna hunt and already have their speculations about who they are. But I agreed. I agreed. All right, this is the time that I tell you to listen to the 40-year-old Dash once again because it's Moochie Mania. It's the greatest game out there. The second iteration is right around the corner. Uh, That idiot that is in the thumbnail alongside the 40-year-old Dash logo, that's him. That's the creator of Moochie Mania. I'm excited to play, but I also have to tell you about Caller and Elbow. Uh, hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and his hooligans down at Collar and Elbow have. Releasing some old shirts again, which is really cool. They're bringing them back out of retirement, so make sure you check them out. CollarandElbowWrestling.com and use a promo code CANCRUSHERS, all one word, capital C and CAN, capital C and CRUSHERS. You'll save 10%. Jenks, when we come back, I'm going to let you choose AEW or WWE first. But let's take a break. I need an adult beverage. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. G'day, you here with Nikki Nitro, listening to Can Crushes. You better follow me, and you better respect me. Keeping it here with the Heartbreaker Hill. Take care. And welcome back from the land down under. That was Nikki Nitro bringing us back from Australia. Nikki was supposed to come to the United States uh, and do kind of a tour up here. And essentially, that's why we had her on the show. But she's also an amazing human being. Uh, head back months ago and listen to that podcast. But uh, travel arrangements and everything, because I've been talking about her, where she's going to be, this, that, and the other thing, just got wonky. Um, she is still scheduled. She's still scheduled at some point. So it's not scheduled, still looking. I Yes, Nikki Nitro's coming to the United States. We're just not sure when. Jenks, what's your favorite, what's your favorite song from the men at work? Now, I know there's a second. Right now, now that you stuck it in my head, Land Down Under is what stuck in my head. But I swear there's another song that I was learned about recently that they did that is well known, but I, now I can't for the life of me think of it because all I have is like, they come from a Land Down Under. So I guess Land Down Under is, what were you going to say? Oh, it, it definitely is Land Down Under. But I know there's one more song. Hold who, on, now I'm looking at it. It's Who Can You Be Now? Who can it be now? Uh, oh, was that it? Yes. Oh, uh, yep. You're right. I just looked it up too. So, yeah. 
All right, folks, we chose Nikki Nitro just because of that, because we haven't heard from her in a while, and we wanted to talk about the men at work, because we are men at work. We're working on this podcast as we continue. Jenks, AEW Dynamite. I'm going to get hate. I'm going to get love. I'm going to get questions. Starts off with Orange Cassidy against Wardlow. I don't know if I like this match now, because... It's too early in Wardlow's reign, career, whatever. I pictured this much later down the line. That was before I even started watching the match. Because you know I'm fans of both of them. I'm reading notes verbatim. I wasn't happy that this happened so soon. Because Orange Cassidy is a threat from the heavyweight to tag team, to everything. And I thought, man, I know we've seen Wardlow destroying people recently, and I understand why. His first defense, I wish it was uh, El Pentico, or uh, not, no, not El Pentico. Um, the other one that wears a mask, not Ray Phoenix either. Serpentine, um, yeah. or yeah, Fuego. Fuego, Fuego, or, you know, I, anybody. You know, anybody. I I wasn't sure if I was going to be happy with this because it was Orange Cassidy right off the bat. I did like some of the funny spots. I did. But I don't like what it did for Wardlow overall. Um, It was more of a surprise powerbomb to get the win. We've seen him try it a couple times in the match. Cassidy blocked it. I wanted to see a title defense that was quick and easy because now this is what I'm going to think about this run right now that Wardlow's got the title and he might have to struggle a little bit because he's now air quotes on that upper echelon. He's out of everybody's shadow. He's by himself. He's defeated 50 fucking people at once. But Orange Cassidy is the one that gave him his toughest fight so far. Eh, wasn't happy about it. I liked it, and I was happy about it. So I'm going to differ from you here, but I do understand your point. I agree. This probably took place a little bit earlier than it should have. Maybe if this happened at All Out, you're all in, that would have made sense. First big title defense on a pay-per-view, that would have been a good landmark. Cassidy giving him some trouble. To me, and I saw all the hate on this match on Thursday, Wednesday night into Thursday about, oh, my God, they shouldn't be doing this. Wardlow should be destroying Orange Cassidy. There was people actually dissing Orange Cassidy as if he wasn't a threat, as if he wasn't actually a legitimate contender in this, in AEW, and not a legitimate uh, wrestler or anything. People seem to forget two weeks ago he took Will Ospreay to the limit yep. for the U.S. IWGP heavyweight title. Will freaking Osprey. So you're going to tell me in two weeks he just needs to get squashed by Wardlow? No, no, that doesn't compute. For me, I liked everything about this match. I like what it did. I also do like the concept that you mentioned it a little bit. This is now Wardlow has to step his game up to the bigger leagues. He has to, he's on another echelon. They always say, oh, it's great you got to the top of the mountain, but it's harder to stay at the top of the mountain, right? This is the TNT mountain. Obviously, it's not as big as the AEW mountain. But now Wardlow has to fend off these more legitimate threats and these more legitimate contenders coming forward. Obviously, they didn't factor in Orange Cassidy as, uh, you know, as a long-term rival of Wardlow. Is this a bring back for MJF? Who knows? But I think for Wardlow, for me, this made sense right out the gate. I loved the match. I loved it. I don't know if I loved the chainsaw bit of it, but you know, whatever. <laughs> we'll go with it. Right. We'll go with Chucky e. T. I did, however, like how the promo that they were going to cheat, and then Wardlow's just like, I don't care. And he shrugs it off. And they were. it was a good way to get Trent and Chuck Taylor out of the match. But it 
to me, it just, I loved it for the fact of, this is saying, this isn't another Goldberg in this industry, which if you thought he was because of how he's dominating. I, I hate you. That, I hate you if you think I know, he is. I know you. I know exactly. You, you're missing the point and you're an idiot because of what he's done, even the labors that he had to build up for MJF, that should have disproved to you that he was the next Goldberg or anything like that. This is something, this now just shows, I mean, Goldberg was dominating people even after he had the U.S. heavyweight title back in WCW. I think for me, this was a perfect way to say to Wardlow, great, you beat up 20 security guards, or you beat up this lower level for these people coming in to face you. It's time to step up your game because you're going to have more legitimate shots. And to me, this is exactly what the TNT title needed. We've been saying it for months. It's been devalued since Sammy. Scorpio Sky started to bring it back, but it wasn't fully getting back. I think this helps reestablish it as a legitimate prestigious title. I'll give you that. The company. I, I, I like that. I, I do. I, it's not that I didn't like the match or anything, and I'm not backtracking. I right. just think this should have been a bigger match. It, it is essentially where I was then. Yeah, I, I think no, I, Wardlow can have the same match with Orange Cassidy at All Out. I think right. one or two, and they didn't need to be squashes. So maybe fucking Archer comes out because we know Archer doesn't win anything anymore. Or uh, Camarado, two big guys, and he struggles with them a little bit. And then he's got to change. I, I just think... I think there was money in Wardlow Orange Cassidy that you gave away. I that no, maybe that was the point maybe I should have put up there. You know what? I did see that at the first. So I that's fine. That's perfectly fine. And I get that. I completely agree with you. There was more money to be made from this. Um but you named one person on that list, but I have to go back to because we've talked about he's just not shown that he's been as dominant. It's Archer. And if we even go off of that point for you, Wardlow just defeated him on the, made him look like crap in the build up for MJF. Yeah, I know. And, but I think there's a built in story there. Even though I'm saying that, I think to your point, there's a built in story there. Archer can come out and say, You embarrassed me a couple months ago, and now I'm coming for your throat. And that promotes him as that. And then they have that 20 minute match at Fighter Fest. I think, you know, for them, they do these these big uh, regular TV show, Fighter Fest, you know, things of that nature. So they had to put a big name with them, right? Yeah. I think you th- I think you do Archer. You have, but you have it be a more contentious match, a more legitimate match than what you've had the six seven minute affair that you had back in April. So to your point, I agree with you, and I agree with the Archer aspect. I to your point, they just needed to tweak it somewhat. For Archer to be a legitimate threat, maybe they're doing that for all in, which I don't like, but we'll I, get there when we get there. I don't like that at all. That's why I said yeah. Archer on Fighter Fest. I, yeah. Oh. How excited are you? And I'm going to throw in both promos back to back. How excited are you for the barbed wire anywhere, everywhere? Because they both said different words each time Jericho, Painmaker, Kingston match this coming Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> is this exploding barbed wire or not? I feel like it changed in the past week too. And if they but, if they make a baseball bat with gusset plates and barbed wire and light tubes wrapped around it, I am going to go ape shit crazy. <laughs> That's for the god of death. God of death. Uh, yeah, leave Gussie alone. Um, can we hashtag that? Yes. Anyways, I'm kind of excited for it. I think this is going to be a I have no stock in Painmaker right now. I'm sorry. I just don't think that he's a Cactus Jack level no. alter ego. And I don't I don't really find him intimidating or like that, anything of that nature. But I'm kind of excited to see what they do. Because I feel like with Kingston and with Jericho, they're going to do – it's going to get pretty brutal. I feel like Jericho's willing to take the bumps. And if it gets Kingston over – I think it, I think it's a hell of a send off for the feud. So I'm excited. How are you? I'm stupid excited. Like <sighs> this match, I hope everybody doesn't expect 
uh, Moxley and I, I don't know whoever oh like a, a CCW yeah. match or you know like a death match. This is going to be there's going to be blood, yes, but it's it's not going to be crazy, but it's going to be stupid, and I'm using stupid as a cool word, as a hip word that there's going to be enough to talk about this six, seven months down the line because these two can go. Is it going to make our match of the year? Uh, probably not. Probably not. But I'm, I'm right. excited to see, you know, um, it. it's going to be, and I don't mean stupid wrestling like when we're slamming something. I, I'm saying stupid like, uh, which, which movie was McLovin on? Super bad. Yeah. That was yeah. a stupid movie. Right. And I love it. So this is going to be a stupid match that I'm going to love. But it's not yeah. going to be three stars, as you know, or three beers, essentially, is probably what this is going to end up being. They could blow my mind. They could. But age, injuries, everything else attached to this, it's going to be rough, but it's going to be entertaining. I agree. It's going to be an entertaining shit show of a brawl. Yes. That's what it is. And I mean shit show in this case in the most endearing way. Like you meant stupid. Yeah. So I agree with you. I also, I'll give a little prediction for it. I think this is Kings, Kingston's going to win this. He's, in my opinion. He's got to. Like he's been well, he's, shit on he's got so to. long. He, he has been. He's had to deal with the wizard gimmick for so fucking long. And Jericho threw a fireball in his face. Kingston's got to win this. I'm also making a prediction for a future pay-per-view of AEW this year. Don't be surprised, barring that the, he does come back for All In, which it seems like things are going that way. Punk Kingston for the world title at All In. Maybe that gives away the prediction, or at, not at All In, but at Full Gear. I might give away a prediction for All In, but... I feel like we're on a build that Eddie Kingston's getting a world title match at some point in this year, and I think it'll be full year because that would be a full year between the time those two fought. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Does he? That's kind of where my head goes right now. Eddie's loved by a lot of people in and out of wrestling, uh, in the locker room, and this, that, and the other thing. <clears throat> does he sniff a title? Like, does he get it? I don't think, to be honest, I don't think he gets it. I uh, think he that's where I gets in the match. Yeah. yeah, I think he gets the match, and it's going to be a feel-good match for everyone. But th- that could also be a maybe a heel turn for Punk as well. Yeah, you crush crush the title hopes of Eddie Kingston. So that's kind of where my head goes. You crush Eddie Kingston's title hopes, and you finally turn into the CM Punk that everybody wants, the heel CM Punk. Oh. Punk just needs to come back and talk a little bit once in a while too. I know he's <clears throat> injury ladled, lidden, whatever, yeah. driven. But I, I think updates or whatever um, kind of add a little bit to when he's coming back because we don't know. At least referring Cody, we get something from him every once in a while saying. They said nine months. It's going to be sooner. No shit. Royal Rumble's in four months now. That's what right. we're all pinpointing to. So, yeah, just an update on Punk would be awesome. Yeah. Mox in, uh, shit. Takashi. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Takashi. Takashi. Yeah, uh, this was a hard fought match. Uh, mm-hmm. I. I Without saying that, I mean, with saying that, I don't know what else you can say. You you didn't expect Mox to lose, but what Hashi brought was, yeah. Like, I could I could watch this match over again, again and again. I, I think there's something there, but I just, I, I don't see it trickling to a New Japan person now. Right. I, I When are they going to sign him? Right. By Come the on. way, yeah. he did his fucking thesis on a German suplex. He I mean, yeah. wrote a whole thesis. I, wrote that as a no. I did too. I didn't know what to start with the German suplex thesis, or when are they going to sign? <laughs> no, 
How do you write a thesis. thesis on a German suplex? I need to read this thesis. Yes. Because <laughs> we're talking, that's at least, I, I've never written a thesis, but I believe it's at least 100 pages. That, I thought it was 50, but either it way, is 50. whatever, it's 50 to 100 plus pages on a German suplex. Now, listen. In high school, I paid the principal's daughter to write my, uh, they weren't called theoseses, but they were my, an essay or whatever about the 1969 Mets. And it's not that I couldn't do it. I just didn't want to. So she wrote it for me, which is fantastic. This is 95. Shit like that can get away with back then. Even with the principal's <laughs> daughter. It was really cool. Um, I could have done it. She bellied up for 50 bucks and wrote my paper. It was cool. The 1969 Mets, I think I got, or she got, 10 pages out of. Yeah. That was probably a lot. I would think a German suplex, you may be stretching 10 pages. Maybe. <laughs> right. But apparently you found a way. I looked up normal length of theses. 100 to 300 pages for dissertation in that regard. But that was from Harvard, so they're overachieving. So maybe 50 is right. Still. I'm trying to, I just tried to look up and see if I could find his thesis anywhere. It's not popping up on the first page of Google. So I'm not going to deep dive too much into it. But to your point, 1969 Mets, only 10 pages. One wrestling move, let's say it's 50. How the hell do you dissect it to 50 pages? Yeah. That's telling every body movement that both of you do. I exactly. Take, I take my finger and I rub it along his shoulder. My middle finger glances his shoulder. My pinky and my ring finger are nowhere to be found. I then latch all five fingers together. Like I was... I, all right, well, so you're halfway done with the move, and that was 30 seconds. Yeah, and then let's live all us thrown in there. You're obviously talking about any muscle you have to use to lift your opponent for a German suplex. So, you know, I have to engage my hamstrings, my glutes, my core, things of that nature. And then do you go, how do you do that? Do you, like, break those down on how the muscles each affect the impact of it? And then how you I train like them? Have- yeah, I've never been interested to read a thesis more than just reading this thesis about a German suplex. Agreed. I agree. That's going to be something that we need to really, hell, I'll pay somebody. If you find if, this thesis, get it to us somehow. If Tony, Listen, if Tony Khan's listening right now, because we think they t- take some of our ideas sometimes for creative, go ahead and send us a copy of the thesis. Can you get one from him? Let's let's try to get it that way too. Let's get it free. Yeah, thesis here. There you go, Tony. Um, we will break down this if we get this thesis. We will break it down in a completely special episode. I will get sponsors for it more than collar and elbow. I will get whatever I need to do to bring this thesis to life because I'm sure other fans are like, "What? What's going on?" <laughs> or if some people are just like, guys, we were watching the match. We were not focusing on this season. <laughs> That's fine, too. But I'm sorry. We're nerds. I got to know what this season said. And I will do that episode. I will clear my schedule and make sure that episode happens. Yeah. If we get our hands on it. But we're going to try. Uh, we haven't spoken a little bit about this whole Christian and Lucha thing since we kind of been off. Um, I love this. I love Christian kind of by himself hitting on Jungle Boy's mom and sister, which yeah. good for him. Uh, I would have too. But I love that he got into Lucha's head, and I was a fan of Luchasaurus, but I thought he was cartoonish. He's not cartoonish anymore. I love no. Luchasaurus. He's a monster now. Christian, I saw this comparison, and I have to agree with it. Christian as a heel right now, at this point in time, is better than Edge as a heel. Oh, yeah. Well, Edge, Edge, is gonna be, Edge is going to be Edge is going to be baby face now. real soon, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But even during his time in Judgment Day and before Judgment Day, 
Edge as a heel compares nothing to what Christian's doing. And Christian is super underrated as a heel in this industry, in my opinion. He doesn't get talked about enough because he can cut skating po- promos and make you hate him like no one else. And it's not just the turtle, the stupid turtlenecks he wears in the ring and looks like a Bond villain every week. It, it's his actual <laughs> words that make you hate him. So I have to agree with that. Also, the comparison of Griff Garrison looking like Jungle Boy brought back so many great memories of Dark Order. I had to give that shout out here. If you haven't seen that clip where they mistake Griff Garrison as Jungle Boy and they recruit him for the Dark Order, it's hilarious. Just go watch it. Brody. Brody Lee's hilarious in it, but uh, but yeah, Christian man. So you love the new Luchasaurus. Do we get Luchasaurus Jungle Boy at all in if he comes back, or are we getting Christian Cage Jungle Boy at all in? Both. Well, essentially both. I think you get one to lead up, and then one at yeah. I think Jungle makes it through Lucha, and then the payoff right. is him and Christian at all, all in. I really See, do. Do you I, think in the other way? I agree with you. I guess personally, I would prefer seeing Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus at all in or at a pay per view because that's how I envision. If they were going to break apart, I would want to see that match as a pay per view match because I think it writes itself. Yeah. And then the build-up, you could build up for the next two months of him getting to Christian. but And then getting him at full gear. But that's not going to happen. I, I would agree with you. The approach here is at some point in the next, I'm going to say in the next couple of weeks, Jungle Boy's coming back. Yes. And then we're going to see a kickoff. Something, there's going to probably be either Dynamite or Major Event Dynamite that they have in August. Where they do a special one-off rampage. And then they lead up, and then Christian is that all in. Um, but, man, either of those matches are just going to be fantastic in their own rights. Agreed. <sighs> I agree. I'm, I I'm excited for, for both of them. I really am. Yeah. Uh, we get a couple promos back-to-back with the Society talking about being hung in a shark tank, which I'm super excited that there's a shark tank. <laughs> we haven't had one in a while. Um, we haven't. Shenanigans must happen. I can't wait. Uh, they're right though. Why? Why do the other two guys get to hang around the ring, but Two Point and Daniel Garcia have to go to Shark Tank? It's a valid point. I can't argue it. Right. But at the same time, we know what. I, I'm just imagining what they're going to try to drop from that shark cage at some capacity for Jericho. Yes. What do they break out? Because there was one. Was it Jericho that broke out of the shark cage in WWE? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah either so, way. Um, yeah, and then they can climb yeah. down because they're a ladder, essentially, to get one of them. Garcia would probably be the first to hit the mat since he's... The youngest. Uh, yeah, the youngest, yeah. the wrestler out of all of them because the other two are right. sports entertainers. Yeah. Yeah. And then Fat Society member that I hate, like is the one holding onto the top and falls to the bottom of the ring and is essentially taken out by himself. Yes. Why well, you got to hate on your namesake, Daddy Magic? I hate I him. don't know. <laughs> Did you think that we were going to get a triple threat between, uh, not a triple threat, a six-man match with Hangman and Silver and Reynolds against all of the House of Black? I thought so. I did. It seemed like they were talking about it. And then Hangman doesn't I mean, come out. Yeah, so I, I didn't understand that. Maybe maybe they're saving it for night two? They haven't announced night two, have they? Uh, Besides the barbed wire yeah, match? Nothing here and there, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I only brought that up is because literally less than 24 hours as of this recording, Julia Hart has been announced to be at WrestleCade. You don't think that's the first spot I'm going when I'm at Winston-Salem, North Carolina, to see Julia Hart? Hopefully she's got her paint on her face and she's still wearing an eye patch. Yeah, I'm excited to meet Julia Hart this year. Full House of Black. I, what, now, they're, all not there yet. they're all not yeah, there yet. But. Right. Well, no, I meant like full-on House of Black, Julia oh. Hart. Not, yeah. yeah. I know they're not all there yet, but... uh 
let me ask you, well, let's throw this back at you. A year ago, did you think you'd be that excited to go see Julia Hart at WrestleK? As cheerleader Julia Hart? Not as at all. Julia, not at all. normal persona? Yeah. Not at all. I figured. <laughs> yeah, not at so all. I think that just speaks to how well they built her up in that slow burn for her to eventually turn into House of Black Julia Hart. It was masterfully done. I think it just talks to how masterfully done it can be where the long game actually pays off. In it. Yep. Hager against Claudio uh, got a lot of We the People chants, so that was nice. <laughs> did you hear them? Yeah, I did. We knew that was coming. I was yeah. wait. I was. I was going to do a game. I had full intention Wednesday morning to start the match, start a timer for when the match started to the first We the People chant. Didn't do it. I forgot about it. But. They'll be like, listen there. to a Jason Derulo song and wait to so say his name. says Jason Derulo. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly why I wanted to do it. I wanted to see how fast it would come up. But, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, moving along. This is very uh, promo heavy right now. Hook doesn't say anything about looking at a title shot. The only title shot I think he needs to look at right now is the FTR. Um, I want to kind of stay FTW. FTW. Yeah. FTR is completely yeah. different. Yeah. Um, they're called team Taz, but team Taz is completely a commentator now. Um, yeah. we need to, because Hobbs and Starks are hated. Hook is loved. There's no, it, it's like a thing of mashed potatoes. Sometimes you get some lumps. Sometimes you get some smooth parts of it. There's no team Taz. Like this that faction needs to end and let them all go their own way. You want to put the FTW title on Hook. I think it's a smart thing to do because Starks needs to go at that TNT title or more or him and Hobbs need to go at Oh, we'll get there. But they're holding Starks and Hobbs back and Hook is on the right path. Give them that title. Get rid of this brand or organization or group. Because they're never together anymore. No, I was going to say, when was the last time you saw Hook associate with even his Stark dad? And Hobbs? Even his dad. I mean, it's easy to say, oh, his dad's on commentary, that's fine. And there's that connection. But for Starks and Hobbs, if you had not, I get a chance if you dropped someone into the middle of AEW and had them watch from, like, let's say last month, maybe even earlier than that, they would have no idea. Actually, let's go back to Double or Nothing, even before Double or Nothing. They would have no idea that Hook was associated with Team Taz or Starks and Hobbs. Yeah. Going all the way back past Double or Nothing, probably back to April, March. I couldn't even tell you the last time he associated with them. I think it was before he debuted. Yeah. He's hooked. <laughs> that <sighs> He's linked. <laughs> To Dan Housen. Yeah, I did. He's linked <laughs> more to Dan Housen than he is anybody else. Even his yeah. dad, again. So, yeah, just break him up. Um, do you like Thunderstorm? Are we getting pushed too much on Thunderstorm? And then Britt and Jamie come out. And I have another question. Yeah. Is Britt going to take the title back from Thunder Rosa? Because as of right now, I don't see anybody else. Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Mark. I mean, Thunderstorm right now seems, I don't, I've always seen it think it was a little forced together. Yeah. I didn't think it was a natural team to begin with. Um, I think, I think you go back to, they have a common enemy, so they're forming an alliance to each other. Um, but with Brit, unless they're going to have, they were going to have Thunder hold on to it until Jade is ready for the title. I think Britt might be the only option they have right now. Unless, you know, also that page is cleared. Yep. And she does show up. But until that point, I feel like it's feeling like Britt's the only threat to the title. But even then, I feel like it's Jade's the win. Still, they're just drawing it out until maybe full gear, maybe Revolution next year. Wow, or maybe that's super long. If we go to Revolution uh, next year, that's 
I know, but I don't, I don't see it, the collision course at all in. No, I it's going like, to be Athena or Stat. Yeah, so it's got to be. I, I it's got to be full gear. Well, let me jump over to the next match and then go to the baddies interview. Okay. We're saying Athena or Stat are going to yeah. take this TBS title or give the first loss or something like that. Layla Actually, Gray I, is now going to be somebody. Yeah. They're hyping her up huge. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I don't even think they she drops, loses to either one of them. I don't either now. I honestly think it's going to be Layla Gray, and I think Stokely is going to end up going with Layla, and Kiera is going to get pissed off and go with Layla as well. Jade's going to be a face. First and foremost, she's loved. She she is that, all right, get ready. She's a bitch. She calls herself a bitch. Everybody loves that she calls herself a bitch. She hates everybody. She's using the Stone Cold mantra, essentially, yeah. and just destroying people. And they love her. So she can't be bad for too long. Or she can be bad, but she's still going to get the love. You need to capitalize on that. You need to get somebody that is fucking despicable and repulsible. Is it going to be Kiera or Layla? I think it's. I think Layla's getting built for something. She has to be, because that's the only reason. There's so much distrust. But then in that organization, maybe you're right. Maybe she is moving towards your baby face. So let's go off of that then. If that's the case, then maybe Britt does win the title in the coming months. And they lock horns at full gear. Because why would you throw another Thunder is still a baby face, still a face. Why would you throw a face at a face if that's going to be the case? Why did I rhyme that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> Mike's raps. Anyways, um, yeah. So, actually, that's a great point, Mark. There's something. They're doing something with this with Layla. I don't know what. But that could be the case where Stokely, they turn their back on him, and Jade's going to have a DTA mentality. And I'm not saying she's turning into Stone Cold, but she's going to have a DTA mentality of, don't trust anybody on that big show. And that's the way it is. Captain Insano. That's Captain a big Insano. show as well. Uh, <laughs> that is a big show, which also I saw a weird rumor that that they're working back for Captain Insano. Yeah. Show up somewhere. I hope so. God, <laughs> for some reason, I hope so. Why not? <laughs> Him against Mark Henry. Captain Insano against uh, red, white, and blue Mark Henry. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Anna Jay against Deeb. Um, essentially, this sets up for Deeb against my cousin Mercedes at Death Before Dishonor. Um, I will say, though, Anna Jay is improving. Like, I, I've i always been an Anna Jay fan prior to Dark Order and then in Dark Order, and I thought she was going to get a lot of help there, and then she had her injury. She's been back for months now. Uh, but... I see improvement. Um, I think in some time she will be a TBS champion or something like that um, because she's loved. It's about damn time, by the way, as Lizzo would say. And I didn't even mean to do that all day, but it's about damn time. Um, In a minute, in a little. Okay, go on. That we get a uh, Anna J. Ty thing. I think this has been needed. I, I think. We have a blow-off match, and then I think Anna Jay is going to get that little bit extra to push her. Maybe Anna Jay is not going to be loved anymore. And we have to stop with the Dark Order stuff, folks, because there's three members, and none of them are around each other. Well, it's not even close anymore. I mean, Anna Jay has gone back to her former ring attire. She doesn't even have, besides the hand signal. Yeah. She doesn't I can have do a the hand signal. Yeah, I do the hand signal. Yeah. So I, I would agree unless they're doing something else. I could be fantasy booking that, you know, unless there's something else going to be on the horizon for the Dark Order. But let's not go down there. I would agree with you. Anna Jay 
I think Anna J factors into like Jungle Boy, um, into the long term plans of AEW. She was a, you know, you could say blue chipper if you want, or you could say she's just that person that they pegged as through the future, and we can slowly build them up because they're still in their mid to young, young to mid twenties. We can build them up, get them to where they need to be, get their reps in so that eventually they can take over the division and take over the company as either a face, as either the face of the company or as either a main event player in the company. Um, we did, I think a couple of weeks last month, we removed Jungle Boy as one of the pillars. At least I did, I remember. But there's that opportunity for him to come back in, obviously. So I think you're right in the sense of she could be coming into her own here in the next few months, several months. I don't think that TBS title, if she gets it, is going to happen till before next year. But Oh, I agree with I, that. Yeah, I feel like you're right. She's coming into her own. There's still little things in her game that obviously she needs to learn, but you're still learning until you're done and retired in wrestling, to be honest. Um, I assume anyways, um, but I want to see where her, she goes, but yeah, they had to build up deep. Now, do you think, obviously, do you think deep has the chance to overthrow your cousin? I hope not. I, I, I hope not, but deep would be, I think. Like first AEW, NWA, and ROH champion ever. I mean, she's. I, I will wave her flag all the time. Like, deserved, right. yes, you know, yes. But I. I think that Mercedes. Because as you see, Claudio is going to trickle to ROH a little bit. I think Mercedes is more of the ROH style than Deeb is. Right. I think Deeb is get ready. Like Randy Orton. She could be around a title hunt whenever she wants it, but she is just there to decimate people and have cool storylines and like she is Malenko ish with all her moves and everything. Yeah. Deeb never needs a title and I will respect any feud that she's in. Mercedes, as much as I love my cousin, kind of needs that little bit of a stroke. She's been done dirty uh, through independence and fuck her NXT run uh, mm-hmm. was abysmal. And so to transition, you know, to ROH in her run with some of them, plus Mercedes is a little bit, I, I think they may be close to the same age. She's not going to be lingering around a lot. So Mercedes right. is going to be ROH for now, and then in time, who knows? Uh, I think there's more plans to get more women in the ROH group, this, that, and the other, uh, waiting for some contracts. Does Paige trickle over to there? Does uh, Naomi sign? You know, Naomi's got a lot going on with her. She's got a ton of ties in WWE yet. Essentially, we haven't heard that she's released. She it released. She's erased everything from WWE from her socials. I mean, there's there's other you know younger women that I think fit ROH more. So my long answer is I think Mercedes keeps it, and Deeb is just a great story for Mercedes right now. Yeah, I would agree with that. I and you're absolutely right. Deeb is someone. She's. She's your ace. You could pluck her into anywhere, and she'd have a great feud. You yeah. pluck her in with anyone, she can translate her style to put that person over and to make those matches believable, make them feel like she is pushing them to the absolute limit of what they're doing. But in the, the long and short of it is, I agree with everything you just said, because you're right. They need, they're going to build out that ROH division, and until that time, Mercedes might be the best person possible to lead a charge as their champion. Yep. So it's just a matter of time before contracts come due and they can start plucking the women that they want for ROH and put them into that company and put them in there to uh, build up a very stout uh, women's division. Just saying, I know there's a lot of baggage, 
and I speak of her all the time since the time I met her in South Carolina, and then in New York City, and then in Pittsburgh. Tessa, Matt, Tessa Blanchard is back in the ring. If things are okay, I think this is a fit, 100% for ROH. Will it come to fruition? I don't know. Do Does Mark want to see it? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. I This baby steps. I think it's baby steps. But she's back in the ring now. Yeah, I will just say this. She has to avoid shooting herself in the foot. I, yep. She keeps doing that. Maybe she comes into wrestling with a muzzle. A prominent wrestling. I'll put it that way. Maybe she yeah. is... You are not allowed speaking. Let's sew your lips closed for a couple of years and just do work. But there's a lot of talent there. There's a ton. On to the main has to be good. Go on, on to the main event. The box against Swerve in your glory against Hobbs and Stark. I'm not shocked. I'm disappointed. I'm happy. And there was an injury, so maybe that's why we're not going to get the match that we wanted yet. So let me wrap all this up. Matt was hurt. Maybe it's going to be longer than we think. Because I think myself and you, speaking not for you, but just thinking, we yeah. we wanted FTR against the Young Bucks again. Shocked that they gave it to swerve in your glory because I personally don't know or maybe it's me I don't know if they're over over yet are they going to be a huge transition yeah because when are we going to get the the blow off between swerve and Lee and disappointed I think I'd rather have seen Starks and Hobbs win this I've been wanting Starks and Hop to get the tag titles for God knows how long. So I would agree in the disappointment of it, but I think you're right. This is a huge transition title match. Um, I think maybe they get it next month. Starks and Hobbs beat Swerve and Strickland in a blow-off match for this feud. Because they're already talking it up. It's got to happen at some point. I don't think it would be all out, but maybe it will be for them. And going up the Young Bucks FTR, I did read somewhere that they hadn't even started considering a Bucks FTR third match. I know. I read that too. What? Why? It's money. Yeah. Why are you not? But, uh, which that baffles me, but okay. So anyways, you talked about the injury. But I, I just feel like we're going to get Starks and Hobbs here in the next month, maybe at All Out, and they actually get the tag titles and have a run with it. And I'm all Which right with also, it. I'm all right with it, too, but it also concerns me that maybe FTR cap off the year, beating Starks and Hobbs, and then Bucks and FTR 3 is next year. For but That would also mean the Bucks could win it. Yeah. And I don't know if I want the Bucks winning the tag title again. I Agreed. So, and that's nothing against them or that I hate them or anything. I just, they don't need it again. Exactly. I think, I think they only got it this time because of the situation with Jeff. Yeah. I so firmly believe they were going to, the Hardys were going to win that triple threat. And I feel like this triple threat, the Hardys would have lost it anyways to one of these two teams. I think the Young Bucks were just plucked in out of necessity. Oh, yeah, because they had the titles. So, yeah. Yeah, well, ex- exactly. Well, because they had the titles, but they had to get the titles off of Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus anyways. Right. To get, to get the feud with Kershaw kicked off. So, yep. yeah, uh, that's kind of where I'm at with that. So I think it just they just put in different players, and the, the evolution here was still the same of what they wanted. But to your point, they did, they're did. going to have a falling out, swerving, and it's going to be over at Starks and Hobbs. And they're going to lose the title swim because, and that's going to be even more of the catalyst for what transpires that they're falling out. And that's what I'm excited for, actually. I want to see Swerve yeah. and Lee go at it. 
and then yep. Hobbs and okay. Starks run with it. But I, I, I really think that Starks needs to drop that title as well. Yeah. To whoever. Um, all right, Rampage, I'm sure we can probably truck through pretty quickly. Um, yeah. We kind of hinted on House of Black about how we thought it was going to be a six-man match, and it essentially just ended up being House of Black against Silver and Reynolds. Um, I love the Dante's Inferno to win the match. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the other match set up for this Wednesday. It's Darby against Brody King. Um, that is right. I just thought of that. Darby came sprinting off of the tunnel. Are we going to get Malachi and Sting at one point? Or what? I mean, that was an awkward, long face to face. Like, if I'm staring at you that long, I'm at least going to, like, make you try to laugh or something. It ended up being like the Mox in uh, what, New Japan at the, the end. Tanahashi. Tanahashi. It was just like, they're staring at each other. We're going to walk backwards. No, we're going to walk frontwards. We're still staring at each other. What? what? Like, at least give you some guns, finger guns or something. I, I hate right. these long looks. They're way too long. <laughs> well, maybe that's the point. They're just to make you feel awkward when you're watching them. But, no, I, I would agree with you. I, is there a blow-off between the two, or is it a blow-off between the two tag teams? Yep. Because I, I don't – I cannot recall if Sting, Sting has never had a singles match in AEW, has he? If he did, it was early on. Not sure. Yeah. Well, my point is, I'm, until it's Darby, I, I just feel like they're just going to have tag matches against these opponents and that, so the stare-up between Sting and Black. But I will say this now, Mark, and I will say it till the day it happens. I, I appreciate that Sting knows sells things, but he cannot no-sell Black Mass or whatever they're calling it. If he does that, I think that does major damage to Malachi. Agreed. Uh, agreed. And again, I think Malachi, they got him from the WWE and everything, but I think he's somebody that's a long term for them as well. Because yeah. I, I, I want him and Brody to have the tag team championships. That's now my new thing. Since Pride and Powerful and Santana Ortiz are officially done, Santana's on the shelf until forever, and his contract will be up, uh, and they will not be together anymore. My new role is to get House of Black the tag team championships. That's that's it. That's her. Okay. Um, as they should. As they as should. As they should. As they should. Um, you're right, though. I think it would really hurt the Black Mask. I really do. Um, and that, that hurts Malachi in the long run. Miro comes up. Is Miro joining the House of Black? I would love Miro in the House of Black. But would he fit, though? He would not fit. Not at all. Yeah. No. It, it's going to be a feud. But uh, It'll be a feud. Well, let, let's go off this. I, I, we, I feel like we felt like the feud was coming after Bendor, right? Right. The fallout in that match. Excuse me. I would not hate Miro in House of Black. I guess we'll put off this theoretical. Because his, his god has forsaken him. Would he be, he would end up being a lost soul in that aspect. And that's who Malachi Black, the House of Black, tends to prey on a little bit. Right? So that could build somewhere, or they could try to recruit him. At the end of the day, it's not going to happen. But theoretically, the story is there. Where they can go back on the, my God has forsaken me again. Where do I go from here? And that's where he could get into the house block. Obviously, it's not going to happen. We're going to get Miro versus Malachi, which is something I've longed for for a long time without even knowing about it. We got, we're getting back to this point of we're getting matches we didn't think we wanted to see, but we're we actually do want to see. Yep. We're getting them fast and furious. And this is another example of that. Of We didn't think we wanted to see this until we put them both in the same match and we're like, we need this match. And we need it bad. So... I'm excited for Miro in black whenever that does come forward. Yeah, I I agree. Uh, 
one more thing on on Rampage I want to talk about because we kind of touched on the whole baddie situation. So Statlander yeah. and uh, Athena beat the Renegade, Renegade Twins. Uh, Miri, uh, Lee Moriarty, that's a match I want to talk about. The Gun Club in Acclaim, that's essentially still a storyline going. And then My heart broke. Did it really? Why? Yeah. You knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, but come on. Daddy ass breaking the hearts of Bowen? No. It hurts, man. It for, hurts. For right now. I'm telling for you, right he, now. he's ending up with them. <laughs> and then the main event that I didn't want to see, that I didn't watch, the Lucha Brothers defeated uh, Private Party. So, yeah. Why you why, why going to do Private Party like that? Because it's Private Party. The, <laughs> the match, <laughs> Lee Moriarty against Jonathan Gresham was unbelievable. I love the Telly Blanchard experience, Air Enterprise, or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. This whole bad Gresham, um, again, he might be new to some of you that didn't watch ROH or didn't know Gresham on the Indies who was in IWC. This this extra level is amazing. I still want Daniel Bryan, or Bryan, son of a bitch, I haven't done that in forever. <laughs> I want Brian Danielson to get healthy, and I want Brian Danielson against Jonathan Gresham because they are the two best te- technical wrestlers out there. Um, I would want that, but we don't know how long Daniel Bryan Brian Danielson is out for. So not only did you screw up Brian Danielson's name here after the longest time of us being good at it, but then you disrespected Zack Sabre Jr. in the same breath. Uh, breath, Man. Man, man, man. Anyways. How, so wait, I how did I mess that. up Zack Sabre you said, Jr.? You said, you said Grisham and Brian Anderson are the two of the best technicians out there. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe he feels a certain way about it. Zack Sabre Jr. Um, Just throwing him under the bus. Maybe he does. Not see it. Maybe he you see his heart. <laughs> he he's got a lot of angst and a lot of hatred in his heart after that Claudio match. I can tell you that. If you see that promo after the match, that was ridiculous. But anyways, I have I I honestly have to say, I have not seen a lot of Gresham in the Indies or before this whole ROH AEW thing. It's just the way things worked out. I wish I would have though. Because just being exposed to the Tully Blanchard experience, and now I know he was in Battle of the Belts a couple months ago against, I think it was Dalton Castle. But, man, I have to agree with you. Uh, Gresham is one of the elite uh, technicians out there in the world today. There's something about Tully Blanchard that I don't know what it is, I feel like I want to hate him, but I love how he goes about his business. I know it's a character. I know that. But the way his business goes about and the way he's slowly building up this Tully Blanchard experience, whatever it is, Enterprise, it's yeah, phenomenal. Same, I did the same and thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. It's but, definitely Enterprise. I have the note. It's Enterprise. It's, it's, it's an Enterprise. Okay. The Tully Blanchard Enterprise, the TDE has been phenomenal. I did not picture Gresham joining this group until two weeks ago when the whole dissension started to occur. And we started seeing the hints in that, man, this whole new side of him, I do want to go back and see what he was like more as the face Gresham more away from this. But I really like what I'm seeing now. You can see a lot of Jonathan Gresham matches on IWC Network for only nine ninety nine a month. <laughs> IWCWrestling.com, oh, where he was a network, <laughs> <laughs> where he was a super indie champion, and him and Adam Cole had some matches, and he had right. some great matches in super indie. So check out IWC Network, we're only nine ninety nine a month. Oh my god, I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, but honestly, I'm definitely going to do that now because I, after Rampage, like these past couple weeks, you know, giving more exposure to him, but. After Rampage, man, to your point, this is going to be good. Yeah. This is going to be really fucking good. And I can't wait to see more and more out of this in the coming months. 
All right, so that's AEW. Um, Death Before Dishonor is this Saturday. Um, as of right now, and this is no joke, uh, Jenks has a lot of stuff going on Saturday. I am preparing for what we're doing on Slugger Sports Network Saturday for a minimum of a 10-hour soccer day, which I'm super stoked for, by the way. Uh, check out the new Facebook page for Slugger Sports Network. You'll be able to follow us wherever we are and tell you what's going on, what I'm broadcasting, this, that, and the other. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if next week when we're on air, if we'll be covering it. We will get around to covering it. I'm just telling you we're recording Friday. So, I don't know <laughs> what's going on. We will watch it. We will recircle back to it so you can get your thoughts. But uh, we will not be recording Sunday morning, so we will not have the results next week. Might as well yeah, be transparent. I, yeah, I will get it. It's just months. depending when. Exactly. It, it's going to be after we record. So that also means in timeline of wise people, SmackDown Rampage will not be on commentary either that week. So it will be more packaged of the upcoming week after yeah. that. So, So who knows what's going to happen. All right, Jenks, yeah. let's take a brief intermission here, and then we'll come back, and I'm sure we can put a little bit of a ribbon on WWE in general about what we like this week from SmackDown and Raw, so we're not way over the two-hour mark, but it, it'll be enough. Yeah. This is Impact Referee and Senior Official of OPW, Daniel Spencer, also host of the Ringside Podcast, given you a message that you should absolutely without a shadow of a doubt never ever listen to can crushers podcast because it's trash plain and simple it's trash um i mean it says it in the name can crushers like really you know you could listen to ringside podcast um you could listen to jericho's podcast you can listen to many other great podcasts that Conrad Thompson does. But why? Why do you listen to Can Crushers? Why? I don't get it. I don't get it. And for the last time, Mark, will you quit calling me, asking me about my extended warranty? I know it's you. I know it's you. No, I'm not going to – my car warranty hasn't run out, so stop it. I know it's you doing those calls. I know you're behind them. All right. I guess i got to say something nice right now, correct? Uh, you know, all right, so uh, love you, Mark. Love the show. Uh, you're listening to Can Crusher's podcast, and, um, yeah, so crush it. Welcome back to Can Crusher's podcast. The WWE portion of our agenda today. So that was Daniel Mark. Spencer that brought us back. I, I guess he's ready to have that death match that we challenged him to next year. He's, on, coming, uh, he's coming back. He's coming for us. He is coming for us. Jenks, only hot topics that we want to talk about on WWE this week. Do you want to go first? Call it in the air. I can go first. Good. Because uh, you were going first no matter what. <laughs> well, the first hot topic I'm bringing up is do we really need the shenanigans around the women's title match, the wrong women's title match? Can we just get it, Becky versus Bianca, and just announce it already? Like, why are we playing games? Quit playing games with my heart. Exactly. Can we just announce it, Bianca and Becky, and move on? Is, I, I don't know why we're playing the countout game right now. Is Becky getting it at SummerSlam? <clears throat> Well, it's a week away, so I guess yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know either because maybe she's not, but that seems the way of the storyline zone because they put Oscar in a whole other feud and a whole other area of the thing with Bliss, Nikki, and Dewdrop. So yeah, separation. We're getting, yeah, so I assume we're getting Bianca, and Becky, three. I, to me, if that's the case then I think Bianca needs to be Becky in 26 seconds. It, to end this. To I, end I, I am almost ready for it to be ended. Like, next yeah. week would be the... It needs to be the end. Can they rebound 
and rehash something in a year or two if one of them are champion? Yeah. It if Bianca is going to be your your face going forward. Okay. But Jenks, let me do this. Who the hell else does she have to defend against? You're now taking Bliss and Oscar out of this. Yeah. Is it time? <laughs> I know I keep saying yeah, but it's getting my brain to catch up with me because it's not full blast today, guys. Um, is it the build-in time to get them to the draft that's inevitably coming so that they can shake up the rosters a little bit? Because if that's the case, that seems like missed opportunities if we move Asuka and Alexa before they have any opportunity to challenge for these titles. Yeah. But there's my yeah. The, I agree. There's your yeah. But on the flip side, maybe they pinned one of them or both of them to be the person that dethrones Bianca. So they have to buy their time because they're not going to take it off Bianca right away. Because in my opinion, if I look at this, those are your two legitimate threats to beat Bianca outside if they push Ronda on us again. But I feel like I really don't like the way this is going to end for Liv, to be honest. Yeah, but <sighs> damn it. the only person left, yeah, you know exactly where I'm going, but the only person that I can think, it's only those two. Those are the only two legitimate ones that I think could beat Bianca besides Charlotte if they re-enter her into the fray. But who knows when she comes back. Rumors as of this morning, Bailey is at SummerSlam. Clearly not in a match or anything, but she makes right. her presence. She's a free agent. She could go after Bianca. Does she? You think she goes after Liv or Ronda? I don't think Ronda wins because of something. I think Ronda is not having this title. I think you think the other way that Ronda's getting it back, and this was just a test for Liv for to see when she gets her mania moment or something like that. I don't. I think they're gonna let Liv have it, maybe till Rumble or something like that. Um, I think this is Bailey's spot. In no disrespect to Becky or Bianca, we need a change. Mm-hmm. We, we need somebody fresh now, because those were your champions for the last essentially three years, Becca and Becky and Bianca. I think it's Bailey. I don't know. I there there's possibilities. But that's the that's the only other person. Like Oscar, I don't know. Alexa, yes. How many times has she had it though? Uh, are they gonna push her to get more heat on Mark? The Sasha stage where she Sasha's had it now seven times. It really never did anything with it. Alexa's reigns weren't that great either. I don't know. Like, there's, there needs to be a shakeup. There really does. There needs to be different feuds. I am tired of Becky and Bianca. If there's a title change, this continues at least another month. So Bianca has to win quickly. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you. And you you made a lot of great points. I think, to your point, if Bailey is coming back, is it summer swimming the night after? It doesn't matter. But she will quickly have to establish her dominance over Bianca. And there's a storyline there. Yeah. There's a feud built off of that that is perfect and right for picking. So you know what, Mark? I think I agree with you on that aspect. Um, it could be Bailey is just coming back and aiming for Bianca because of the injury. Because she has been on the shelf for, what is it now, 14 months? 13 all, months? All of, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're probably right on track with that one. 
at, we're just going to loop everything together. As for Liv on the SmackDown side, she's always going to be your underdog champion. So uh, no disrespect to Shotzi or Raquel or somebody like that. Um, Liv is going to be a transitional champion. Yeah. I do think Raquel takes it off of Liv. Okay. I I do. Is it too soon? Maybe. Maybe it is. But you, you saw the love they have for Raquel. They, yeah. There's, there's love there. They need a bigger body. Somebody that's going to destroy a little bit. I don't know. I As of right now, that's my thought. Liv's always going to be that. She's going to struggle to beat Shotzi. She's going to struggle to beat this one. Or the, but she's always going to get that roll-up victory or some kind of quick submission or something. Take an ass-beating. The whole Ricky Morton thing of the Rock and Roll Express. Take an ass-beating. Tag out. Catch a breather. Come back in. Get his ass beat. Oh, double drop kick. Over. That's going to be Liv. That her, she's not going to have this 95-0 and 0 awesome run. Because that's her yeah. whole character. No, no, that's fair. I would say if it is Raquel, I would push her to, you're saying you have that destroyer, you have that big body, that big, that person that can dominate matches. If it's Raquel, this has to be a heel turn. Oh, agreed. I think it has to be a heel turn and it has to be an impact statement, which I think it can be. So maybe Liv is a transitional champion. You're thinking longer term. I was thinking Ronda, but maybe Ronda loses it to an outside interference by Charlotte coming back. Then we get stuck with Charlotte and Ronda again. But it's not for the title, so I guess it wouldn't be that that terrible. I just don't want to see that ever again. To no. be honest. No. I yeah. Um by the way, Brock starting on Raw, I I love this segment. I must have been just old, young Mark enjoying it. I love the Brock Heyman theory segment to start Raw. Yeah. Brock is, I mean, yes, he needed Heyman, but he he does it now. I love that they're letting him do his own thing. Am I excited to watch Brock and Roman again? I don't know. Do I really think that Theory is going to cash in at SummerSlam? I guess you'll have to wait until next week when we record, because that's when we'll give our our uh, our thoughts. Because what SummerSlam is actually it's two weeks. Yeah, the week. Yeah, the week after. So we got two weeks. Yeah, yeah. So next week when we record it, we'll do our SummerSlam predictions because SummerSlam is on a Saturday, of course. So that that's true. That's yep. always good. So we'll have that to talk on. But I think there's things around theory cashing in on SummerSlam. And we'll get to that next week. Yeah. We'll there's too there. much there's too much teasing, and I'll just tease you with that. And he's got to fight oh. Bob the a match before or so. I same thinking, so I think we're on the same page with that one, but gotta wait for it. Gotta, gotta wait. wait for the next yeah. gotta wait for that prediction. Um other than that, oh McAfee. McAfee was fun. To, to start the show. Yeah. The, I appreciated it. I'm going quickly, then you can re, re, rebound, whatever. Um, New, yeah, go for it. New Day coming out as a Vikings. I was shocked. And then I'm like, oh, it's New Day. It was. Oh, it almost brought me back to uh, DX coming out as a nation. So I enjoyed mm. that. That that was a little, a little bit of fun. I, I didn't see Shanky and Gender being in incorporated into these guys um and then the uh, why how who picked this why is double j what does double j have to do with the usos you know i was going there at some point what does he have to do with the usos in the street profits it made more sense if somebody would have picked our truth than double j out of nowhere now, again, I have an amazing portrait of Double J. He was nothing but amazing to me. Him and Karen wanted the portrait. They loved it. They offered me money. I said, no, I'm a Double J fan. This doesn't fit. It would be almost like saying, hey, 
Cody Hetrick is going to be the special referee. Who the fuck is Cody Hetrick? How does he fit into this fucking storyline? This is what has me more pissed off than anything this week. Double J doesn't fit into this. Have it be anybody in the WWE. Tell me, Jenks, how this works out. You're looking at me. I have no goddamn clue. Are you serious? Like, I <laughs> watch this, and I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. The only tie-in Double J has to this whole thing is that it's in Nashville. Yes. That's it. That is the only reason he's involved. Put him in another goddamn match, or find him an, a Legends match to have at SummerSlam. Let's do that. Put him against Mad Cat Moss. What the hell? Double J, as the special guest referee, is leading me to a prediction that I will give away next week because things <laughs> will happen. So <laughs> I'm hyping up next week. It made no goddamn sense. Like I chuckled and then I sat there and was like, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah. The little fuck are they doing? So I, I guess I was just outraged by it. Um, list off the other things. New Day, man. It was good. Wasn't their best thing. I'll no, I that. agree. I agree. So, so you know, that was what it was. Love that Pat's back. Love that he's, we're getting the build up now. I can't see Pat losing, but I'm not going to give that, I may have given that prediction away, but we'll get there when we get there. Can, I'm just what, glad Pat McAfee's back. It's a little more entertaining on SmackDown. We'll can, I, can I jump in for one second? Do it. Pat's not done wrestling after yep. this. And somebody returns to wrestle him that we've all su- suspected is going to make an in-ring to return at some point. But we have to wait till next week to find out. Right. Yeah, that's my <laughs> teaser. That's my teaser. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. We'll, run, we will wait. Yeah. Run with your other stuff. Uh, my only other thing is. I kind of called out the rest of that. Um, there's nothing with Madcap or anything like that. I guess the other thing is we are getting Logan and we, did we talk about Logan getting that multi-year contract here with WWE? Is that one-offs? Is it full-time? Do we know if it's part-time? I don't know if I know the details of that, but we're at least getting them at SummerSlam. Yeah. For, I think, just namesake value in a match at this point. But And to blow off what happened at WrestleMania, obviously. Right, right. So Miz takes yeah. a loss. Yeah, Miz is ta- well. Miz is definitely taking the loss. I mean, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Are you happy? And we've danced around this. That Dolph Ziggler is back. Yes. Does he fit into something down the line? And we can we can these are all teasers because I think that's, I think he. Yeah makes an appearance at SummerSlam as well. I would agree. And I will say, let's tease this a little bit more because I still haven't fully figured out where Dolph fits in this whole situation or how he plays into it. Because I've been racking my brain since Monday with him being involved. I don't know if I have as clear a picture that you do right now. I don't have a clear picture. That's why I said these are teasers. I need to dig more this week. And yeah. not dig and find out like what's going on, like mentally in my mind, make up shit and speak exactly. with you guys. Yeah. Although I will say my mentality is going to be stretched between Marvel and this this week, but just so everybody knows. So we're going to see how creative I can get with this. Excellent. So, so that's WWE in general. Um, we talked a lot about Vince and Sasha and Paige first, and then we wrap back around to our thoughts next week. Again, we won't be talking about Rampage or SmackDown. Um, So we will have more time to chat about SummerSlam. And it is still considered one of their bigger pay-per-views. They consider it it. I don't know if there's any pay-per-view that's big or streaming live service device or whatever the hell. Whatever. We will talk about some of this nonsensory that we just brought up here in the last one, because I think they're trying to make moves. 
and they're trying to do something to bring it back because essentially they're bringing back TV, TV PG-14 14. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some of these people line up good with it. But I don't know if it's going to be there. I think it's going to be pushed at us too much. It's not going to be as natural. If they're going to try to get the Attitude Era back, not happening. Because they're going to push gonna it. They're going to push it too hard. Yep. So. Yeah, it's going to be. It could be either bowling shoe ugly, or I perfectly love, brilliant. I love bowling shoes, by the way. I I honestly do. I almost thought about buying because you can resole bowling shoes and wear them as regular shoes. Right. I mean, to each their own. They could be comfortable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to, they could be. I. You, if you get the right inserts for them, I think they could be comfortable. Right. Yeah, but we'll leave it at that. Although I didn't think this podcast would go to bowling shoes. It's bowling shoe ugly sometimes. It really yeah, is. That's true. Yeah, you're true. True. <laughs> true words have never been spoken. Guys, again, Moochie Mania is on the 40 year dash. <laughs> if you ever wanted a game that is going to mess with your brain, your sensory, your wisdom, your well being, anything, you have to head over to the 40 year dash. And play the game with Jenks and Cody Hetrick. I can't wait till the next installment becomes because I want to play. So head over to all your podcast listening services. Type in 40 Year Dash. It is essentially last Monday's episode. Listen to Moochie Mania. That's why this hairy ape looking fella is on our thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, it's not called the Game of Games lightly. There's a reason behind the name. So you will laugh. You, take part. you will cry. You will cry. You will, you will hate yourself. <laughs> we did it all. You go through the gambit of emotions during this whole thing. Yeah. That's all I got, Jenks. Uh, I got to go shoot some doves or quails or <laughs> I don't know, something. I'm ready you go to enjoy shooting. You go hunting. Uh, don't fall out of the tree when you're hunting. Yeah. I'm going to go just conspiracy theory, either WWE or Marvel, because I'm in that kick right now, and I always do. How, so far, we're going to, how go far are you? Because we haven't spoken to this about a month or two. How far are you on your old WCW watchbacks? I am still in January of 96. I've kind of taken a back seat here because I'm balancing not just stuff I got to balance a lot of stuff at the same time. So it's kind of taking a back burner with work and all that. I can't watch it during work time uh, as much as I had been. Fucking so, work. God. I know. I wanted to. My original goal with this was try to line up the NWO stuff and all that because I'm into the year now. This was way back when I started it, but it just did not work. I just haven't done it, gotten that far yet. So. Okay. So you paused. We, That's okay. I paused. I had to. But hopefully things will clear up a little more at work so I can get back into it so that maybe we can do another special segment on the WCW paper for yeah. the coming months here. Because we'll have plenty of time. Plenty yeah. of time. <laughs> All right, guys. We will. I love you. He loves you. Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Boop, boop. Boop. <laughs>